Hans, I've just noticed something. These communists are all cowards. <laughs> Have you looked at our caps recently? What? No. A bit? They've got skulls on them. <laughs> Hans. Are we the baddies? Nuclear bombs. So that's kind of like the most basic weapon usually in Stellaris. I assume it's one of the most basic missiles in this game. Oh my goodness me. Welcome back to what I can only assume is a primitive DLC for the humanoid species pack where you get to explore the previous history of your humanoid species. Today we're doing extended ground combat. Now we're playing as one of the nations on this minor planet, the German Reich. We've managed to force France, one of our neighbours, to capitulate to us. Uh, so we've got some good territorial gains. And it's now time to push the attack in other places. We don't have great naval intelligence at the moment, but I'm pretty sure there's a trade route coming through here. So we're going to do um, something kind of cool, I hope, and we're going to attempt to intercept some of that trade. Otherwise, we're preparing naval strikes into the channel and then doing a little bit of strategic bombing on the United Kingdom. The British are pushing up through North Africa. They've got uh, quite a few infantry divisions here and of course our allies as the computer are completely useless and being forced back. So I think it's time to send Rommel into the desert. We've also got a little bit of issue with our current occupations. Now somebody pointed out this screen to me in the previous game that I played through. Now this is a little bit closer to the species rights tab but it's not really species, it's empires or countries, I suppose. And we can't necessarily set the rights that far, though it looks like we can force some uh, slavery or slavery type options, which, which is rather interesting. And it does seem to be economically good. So yeah, so as ever, there is an economic benefit in most Paradox games from some form of prisoners with jobs. And in our push westwards, we do seem to have missed one country out, that is Luxembourg. But don't worry, folks, that's about to change very, very shortly. Oh, and goodness me, this has been quite a bad engagement. We've lost 14, 16, 17 subs, 19, 12, oh my goodness. Well, there goes the submarine fleet, it seems. Yeah, I don't really know how I could have uh, prevented this. I thought my submarines might do a little better, but yeah, that was... Uh, that was what I would say is a crippling defeat. We lost 29, goodness me, 29 submarines. Do we, what do we have left? We've got, oh, these six are still fighting somewhere. Oh gosh. And there comes the British fleet again to take down what remains of our submarine deterrent. What's very interesting is naval engagements are so completely different to anything I'm, I'm used to here. Um, this screen is quite impenetrable. I, I've read up a bit on it and I know there's a screening ratio that I need to keep up for having my screening ships and my other ships and then there's whatever this one does. And um, yeah, it's just, it's just so vastly different to what I'm used to here. <laughs> and the Danish have insulted us for the last time. Uh, apparently they've got a minus 100 Danish opinion of the German Reich. And if that's not a reason to go to war, I don't know what is. Denmark surrenders. This tiny state of Luxembourg has stood up to us for far too long, and now they must be irrevocably punished, or brought into the fold, or um, something like that. Either way, charge. I mean, that was, I, I think, less than three hours that they, they lasted. It really wasn't a great defense. But I do want to do better in the sea, and for that reason, it's time to rearm our nation. We need ships, we need space lasers, uh, wrong game, but we still need lasers. And if any of our future plans are going to succeed, we are going to need more landing craft. Interestingly, we now seem to have full and complete uh, Navy intel on the British, um, which is, is good, I believe. This allows us to see all the trade routes they've got. Yeah, we're really not targeting many trade routes of very much importance. But unfortunately, we also can't get to these trade routes and still have air support, air cover for our ship. So for now, I am just going to continue trying to attack the English Channel. I also think that I can now switch over to total mobilization. I've got plenty of political power. My plan is uh, I've already got extensive conscription. I won't go up to service by requirement. However, I believe I can put women into the workforce. Yes, my stability will go down a little bit, 
but I'm already uh, I'm already improving my working conditions, so I'm sure that'll be fine. This desert railway that I built for the Italian seems to have completely solved our supply issue problem in North Africa. I may finally be getting it with supply, you know. And we're going to take out Yugoslavia. And there goes Yugoslavia, another domino in the European game of dominoes. And with all these resistance problems, it's probably time to go for something like military police. Now I've got an upgraded advanced medium tank, whatever, whatever it might be called. We slapped a whole bunch of armor onto it. We've got the speed, I think, quite high. We're now going at 10.8 kilometers per hour on average with an armor of 112. This seems pretty good. We're going to try and roll it out into production and hopefully that, that'll mean everything will go better. Due to some crippling supply issues, it seems that the British are completely melting now in North Africa. Though I think we're about to face the same supply issues ourselves as we then push forwards. And I've just had a great plan. We are going to invade Norway from Denmark. It's, uh, I don't think anyone would have seen that one coming. I've managed to get the upgraded technology for um, these naval invasions. And we're going to try out a floating dockyard or a floating port. Jetty? I've forgotten the name. And I've just realized the reason why it's not working is that I actually have to declare war first. I think! Mine too. Think! So I'm going to do just that and we should have no more problems. And there we are, Oslo the capital has fallen almost immediately. Now let's bring up a couple of panzer divisions to the front and we can have a lot more fun. The British turned up to help defend Norway. Unfortunately, they've been encircled and cut off in the Norwegian mountains. And that means they're all about to die. We're coming to it a little late but now I think it might be time to annex the Soviet Union. Okay, so my Eastern Front leader is going to be having logistics wizard in a moment, hopefully, which should help a bit. I'm entirely not sure if it's the right thing to do. Do it. But I've lined up a lot of forces on the border with the Russians, and now I think it's time to attempt to push forwards through that border. And we've just begun heavy water production as well. So without any further ado, let's see what the Russians have in store for us. I seem to have made a little bit of a breakthrough here at Lwau, or Lvov, I've got no idea. We are using up equipment at the moment at something of an alarming rate. Yeah, we're gonna be out of guns in a few a few weeks, I think, at this rate, but, but press on the attack nevertheless, men. We are making some progress, but it is quite a slog. Uh, the Russians are putting up quite a bit of a fight. Some of their divisions, their armor, we're actually not able to pierce, possibly because I never bothered building any anti-tank guns. Who knows the exact reason? It doesn't matter. But the important thing here is that we're going to sneakily naval invade them from behind up here at St. Petersburg, and hopefully that should fix all of the issues. And here comes the naval invasion. Are they prepared for it? They have some units. Leningrad, for instance, does, or all St. Petersburg, does have an... Oh, no, no, we're straight through there. That's really quite unfortunate for them but for us it's pretty good that should hopefully pull some soldiers away from the western front down here allowing us to break through i think the main issue is that i didn't have uh green air i've got red air as they would say above most of these combats here which is a slight problem <clears throat> It seems that Heinz Guderian, who we gave quite a few tank divisions to, well, he doesn't seem to have those divisions anymore, which is a little bit upsetting. Um, I could definitely say that I'm not super happy with his performance in that respect. Possibly we asked too much of him. Oh, and I totally didn't notice, but we've run out of manpower. That is bad. Uh, luckily, we can uh, have non-discriminatory conscription. Which means that it doesn't matter how uh, sick or unhealthy you seem, no worries, we'll put you to work. Our northern front does seem to be collapsing a little bit, uh, but that, that's fine, we'll, uh, we'll go and save them. 
it doesn't look like we're going to complete Fuhrer Directive 21 anytime soon. Uh, Moscow is still quite far away. I mean, we haven't even reached Stalingrad yet, and we're already at March 1942. All right, we paused the assault. We checked our supply, which is sometimes a little bad. And now we're getting ready to attempt to attack again. Great, so we've just managed to encircle just a few units. If we can keep doing that though, we might be able to win this war. We might have made a little breakthrough here. I'll see if I can exploit it with some of my faster, uh, I've forgotten what they're called all of a sudden. The things with the motors, the motorized trucks, truck divisions. My truckers, somewhat swarming through though. We might have, oh, let's make a break for Moscow. Maybe we can do it. No, no, we couldn't do it. Unfortunately not. But we've made quite a bit of a puncture into the northern part of Russia. Uh, I don't know if this is a good part to attack, but uh, I know from I know from some alternate history that uh, this bit over here, the southern part down to Stalingrad, that was a, a more preferred route. Yeah, quite a bit of back and forth. We've actually had some massive losses up here to the north. Uh, Heinz Guderian has managed to basically lose his entire army. Uh, as you can see down here, bottom off, these were pretty much full um, a little while ago, and now not really anymore. Thankfully, our allies in Romania, the computer, they're attacking. We had some troops stationed here, but we weren't attacking. I've fixed that now, so we're attacking, and now the Romanians are pushing forwards. Well, none of this seems to be going brilliantly well. We are we're losing a lot of men again. Uh, <laughs> we currently, oh my goodness, so we've lost a total of. 3.5 million casualties to the Soviets and they've only taken a million from us. That's that's definitely the wrong way around. But if there's one thing I'm proud of, it's the fact that our supply problems, well, we, we barely got any supply problems. And then the Soviet Union, in a bold move, has just declared war on Iran. Down to the south, okay. We do still have the city of Leningrad. That's something, a little bastion up north. They are getting some massive bonuses here. Okay, so the problem, a lot of the problems are coming from, we haven't got air support, they've got an intel advantage, they're entrenched, they've got lots of terrain, and their commander is very skilled at defending from us. For some reason, the Russians have just melted away here to the north. I'm not quite sure what's going on. Yeah, they, they've basically just vanished though. It's, it's very perplexing. Something must be happening somewhere else on the Russian front because they're, they're just gone. They're, they're all got. They're all gone. They're, I don't quite know how to explain this, but yeah, I can't see how we can lose now if they just leave. Um, let's check our focuses. So focus tree wise, we've done loads of things. What I've not really done that much is the naval things. Could I improve national spirit? No, we need to have London and Paris. Yes, okay. Perhaps the second Vienna award might as well do that. We've got so much political power as well. I should probably spend some of it. Let's do some heavy water production. We can also issue war bonds. Yep. And let's do some propaganda against the Soviet Union. What, what is going on here? What, why are they just allowing me to walk through their territory? It's, it's very, very odd. I mean... <clears throat> I know that sometimes the AI can be a little silly in games, but but this one really is taking taking the biscuit. It's yeah, it's just bonkers. They've done it again. They've they've just moved away until they've only got one man on the line. I oh that would have been a problem. Maybe they've joined the war with Japan. Oh, yes, they're attacking Japan to the east. Oh, brilliant! So while the Japanese fight them, we're going to clean up. This is, this is great, 1943, it's the year, I'm feeling good. Yeah, I'm basically ignoring the air now. We've got, they've just got so many planes compared to us uh, and it's becoming a little difficult. I think we are also probably going to see rebellion very soon. That could be quite an issue. And there is so much that needs repairing across our nation and in the other nations from all of the sabotage going on. And now the Iranians have capitulated. Now, the Republic of Iran, goodness me, that's what a terrible turn of events. That's probably where a lot of the Russian forces were, so we can probably expect them to 
start returning now. Given that, then I think it might be best to stop my aggressive pushing and just wait a little bit. Yeah, we've uh, we've definitely got the attention of the Soviets again, and they're pushing us back. This is something of a problem. Uh, okay, uh, what do we do to deal with it, though? Let's have a think. But it looks like we may be about to get a naval invasion somewhere in Flandern. I mean, we now we do have full intel on the British, so we can see where their ships aren't quite a few places actually yes we should we should hit them where they're not i think that we're about to get d-day though um i haven't got i can't if i pull anything off the eastern front which is crumbling we'll have a problem uh, a big problem and so i won't be doing that and then i think if i pull anything off the other front the well i haven't got another front that that's 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 my forces unfortunately uh oops let's switch over to guerrilla tactics uh that might help in the problems we're facing. Uh oh, uh oh, this is a problem. D-Day is happening. Um, yeah, D-Day's happening, and we <laughs> we had we have got nothing here defending it. Oh yes, yes. So we've got um, it's very small infantry divisions, and they've got some massive ones. Ah, this could be this could be a minor issue. Let's see how it develops. Apparently there are dangerous naval invasions about to happen in northern France. I I am shocked. I am utterly shocked. Well, uh, well, this is going entirely badly. Um, though, yeah, I mean, we, we, we're doing worse than, than history would suggest we could do, uh, which I suppose it is, that is what it is. We may have slowed them down there. I don't really see how we can hold it here. We've got basically one little infantry division and this is just a... This is one of the divisions we started the game with. I've increased the size to make it 20 width, but but it's nothing nothing special. We do have panzers, six and a half thousand of them. We just can't deploy any because we've got no infantry equipment. Oh, let's let's have a go. What's the worst that could happen? Wow, they've got some big values here. The main issue, actually, I feel that we found in this campaign is our air support. I simply didn't have enough of it. Um, and without, without successfully winning the air support game, you're a little bit stuffed, it seems. You know, air support, that's the big one, or at least a big one. All right, we have now finished researching nuclear bombs in 1944. How long until we get a bomb though? 89 days, okay, okay. We're gonna be building more reactors. We just have to hold out a little longer, and then hopefully we can start using some interesting methods to prevent the enemy from winning. In order to attack better in the future, we are going to have to pull back now and defend ourselves, defend the homeland, defend the fatherland, basically. We've got a few issues in a variety of places. Yeah, we're, we're, we're giving up. Yugoslavia, um, Italy's pretty much fallen, but that's okay. We're going to get it all back. Now is the time to launch our counter-offensive. Oh, phooey. I don't necessarily want to do it this way, but they're giving me no choice. Yeah, so D-Day's happened. We are we've lost uh, lost quite a lot of land. The Eastern Front that's not going so well, but we have a secret secret surprise up our sleeve. We have air superiority over London. Uh, briefly, we've got no air superiority anywhere else at all, and now we're going to enact uh, Plan Revenge. So you have chosen death. Nuclear bombs, so that's kind of like the most basic weapon usually in Stellaris. It's the most basic missile. I, I assume it's one of the most basic missiles in this game, so let's let's have a go with that. Oh my goodness me. Yep, there goes London. Wow, that's... Apparently it's difficult to maintain a stiff upper lip in the face of a nuclear blast wave. Oh, I suppose it's time to prevent further loss of life in Germany uh, and for that reason we're going to have to drop a bomb on Essen just to show them we mean business. Oh that negatively impacted me as well. Ah that's a bit of a problem so that really upset. My people didn't like the fact we had to bomb ourselves. Uh oh. Switzerland joined the Allies? 
But I didn't invade Switzerland. That's so mean. I thought they were despicably neutral. Oh, and we've had a complete encirclement of our forces in northern France. This is this is beyond bad. Let's see if we can break out a little. Yeah, we might be able to. Interestingly, in this timeline, Munich fell long before Paris did, but uh, I guess some generals are better than others. Unfortunately, we've now reached the point where we have nuclear weapons, but no way of using them. Our positions are being overrun and taken down. It's um, it's a real issue, I would say. You know, this is uh, this is going poorly. Total casualties so far: fifteen point four eight million on our side, ten point nine million on the other side i guess that's probably somewhere in the region of one or two pops in stellaris from this point of view it's a vast vast number france is basically reformed uh the russians are closing rapidly on our west interestingly though in this timeline because d-day happened in 1943 it means that it means that they the russians aren't quite where they would like to be they're not quite as deep into our territory Interestingly though, Paris is still ours. We are very heavily entrenched here. There we are, and with the liberation of Paris, it was ironically um, the liberation of Paris that led to Germany's capitulation. Let's take a quick look at the map that they've drawn up in the aftermath. So we've got West Germany and East Germany with uh, the Czechoslovak Union. And then the Soviet Union got this weird little finger going through. Wow. Um, what? <laughs> Britain have taken France. That's a little interesting. Uh, okay. So what we ended up with is complete border gore in Europe. I guess this just does go to show that even with nuclear weapons, you cannot avert battlefield catastrophes. This has been a very interesting first campaign. Uh, things didn't quite go according to plan. There's quite a few lessons to be learned here. First of all, don't declare war on the USSR until you're completely sure you're ready for war against the USSR. And if you would like to see more Hearts of Iron content from me and from this channel, please let me know in the comments down below. Um, I did quite enjoy making this video. It was a bit of a slog to go all the way through the Second World War, but We've done it and we've arrived at the conclusion which sadly for me that aligned with history and it was a complete and overwhelming German defeat. But they did manage to invent the atomic bomb.